to curse a Blackmore Manor. Um, yeah, we're gonna play new game. Welcome to my latest case, oh my the God. Curse of Blackmore wow. Manor. To start, choose junior or senior detective. Junior. If you're new Dear Ned, greetings from jolly old England. Although right now I'm not so sure about the jolly part. That's because I'm on my way to Blackmore Manor where the daughter of one of our neighbors is living. The daughter, whose name is Linda, recently married Hugh Pendleton, a British diplomat. Hugh travels a lot, so the only people at the manor with Linda are Hugh's aunt, Mrs. Drake, and Hugh's 12-year-old daughter, Jane. The thing is, ever since Linda moved into the manor, her health has gone downhill. She's practically bedridden, and no one seems to know why. Her mother is convinced something is terribly wrong and wants me to find out what. So here I am, about to be dropped off at a huge centuries-old mansion in the middle of a dark, foggy moor. <laughs> I can't tell whether the butterflies in my stomach are because I'm excited or just a tad creeped out. Talk to you soon, I hope. Nancy. Night, Mish. Good luck. Blackmore Manor. Here we go. Where's the swamp? Why do I have frogs? Croak, ribbit, 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 croak. Nancy. You need to calm down. What the hell? Who's there? Hello? Okay, did you eat today? What the hell? There's something out there! Where, child? A beast. Over there! I mean, something was out there. Uh, come in. Uh, come in. I can't. I'm Mrs. Drake. I take it you are Nancy Drew? Yes, and I really did see something, Mrs. Drake. I heard something, too. Oh, people are always seeing and hearing things on the moor at night, especially you Americans. Why don't you just go on up to your room? It's the one with the moon on the door. I'd like to see Linda, if I could. I'm afraid Linda is uh, not quite ready to meet with you just now. But please, come see me after you've unpacked. I'll be in the conservatory. Oh, Bye, Mrs. Thank you. Drock Drake. Draco, Miss Draco. I don't know. Um, let's look at my room. <clears throat> Wonder what goes there. Something goes here. Okay, we got the constellations here. We got room service and a alarm clock here and we have this thing i forgot what they're called this is called okay thanks um this is a puzzle box for something john pendleton we're gonna read this granny and the water fairy by john pendleton 1937 in a faraway place beside a pond since gone dry there lived a frog named granny Granny was content to live by herself and never ventured into the pond, for back then it was a fearsome place, full of crocodiles that lurk beneath the surface, just waiting for a tasty little morsel like Granny to swim by. But one day a beautiful princess appeared on the other side of the pond. Like Granny, she was by herself, for she had been unfairly banished from her father's kingdom. Sometimes at night, Granny could hear her sighing, singing in songs, and talking to herself out of loneliness. He longed to swim across the pond so they could keep each other company, but he knew the crocodiles would eat him if he tried. So he sat on the shore, croaking mournfully in the moonlight all alone. Then one day, a kind-hearted water fairy appeared in the mist above the swamp that surrounded the pond and told Granny that she would help him cross the pond so that he and the princess could be together. How? Granny asked. I cannot swim cross, where the crocodiles are fast and fierce and have eaten more friends and relatives than I dare to count. You will not have to swim, the water fairy replied, for I shall make a path for you. And don't forget, crocodiles tend high in the middle of the pond near trees, and they hate boats. 
oh, hold on. There's this little sheet of paper here. Water, earth, fire, air. Keep that in mind. With that, a lily pad suddenly appeared in the pond in front of Granny, although he was still afraid. He summoned his courage and hopped onto it. Then another lily pad appeared, and after that, another, then another. Granny left for one the next, and his tiny heart pounding in his chest with his tiny heart. Till long last, he leapt with the last lily pad onto the dock where the princess sat. She was delighted to see the little frog, and when she realized that Granny had made the perilous journey across the pond just to be with her, she smiled for the first time since her banishment. So grateful was she for Granny's company that she gave the water fairy a gift. A bright red key, which water fairy soon put to use, and all three lived happily ever after. Okay. Let's go this way. However, do I have to learn this? Yes, I'm afraid you do. If I do well, can we play a game? Yes, but only in French. She's obsessed oh. with games, you'll notice. Um we're gonna go up here. Keep all those in mind, bludging. Bang, bang. Let's hear them real quick. Whoop. Bling. Bludding. Wah. Bang. Steam. TikTok. So I wanna do the ones that come when you come upstairs, so. Bling, whoop, wah, bling, whoop, wah, bang, bang. So, it should be. And this should open up for a key. That's our first thing we got. Now, if you try to pin this hole, this keyhole, it's not going to take it. The key fits, but it won't turn. I need to put some kind of grease in there first. Grease is the word. This is not a good time. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, uh, that's a... Stay in Italy as long as you want, then. Some kind of husband you're proving to be. It's not all in my head. Don't bother. Okay, we're gonna go in here. This is where Linda is, mother of the little girl uh, who wanted me to come here. Or whatever. Linda? Hi, it's me, Nancy Drew. Nancy Drew, our friendly neighborhood detective. Or the reason well, I'm here. Welcome to Blackmore Manor. I apologize for greeting you under such unusual circumstances. So, how are you feeling? So, how are you feeling? How am I feeling? Well, I feel like... <laughs> I feel like something really strange is happening. Can you be more specific? Could you be more specific? Could I be more specific? Ah, the ace detective is grilling me for details. <sighs> I'm tired all the time, my mouth is dry, my vision is blurry. But that's not important. Here's what's important, Nancy. There are some doors that should never be opened. There are some doors that hold secrets which must never be known. That's everything you need to know. Okay. Now it's... Mommy, can I come in? No. You're supposed to be in your lessons. Lessons are over. I want to meet Nancy. I said no, Jane. Okay. That was my stepdaughter. She can be such a pest sometimes. Anyway, I understand you feel an obligation to my mother, but trust me. There's nothing you can do. You're welcome to stay, but I strongly recommend that you go home as soon as possible. I can't go home empty-handed. It might jeopardize my ace my detective status. Okay. I can't go home empty-handed. It might jeopardize my ace detective status. Linda? Linda? I'll be going now. Okay, I'll let you rest, but I'll be back. I'm here for you if you need me. That's sweet of you. Let's give her some space. Um. We have these portraits of her and her husband. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna look at this thing and that's covered. It's a parrot named Lulu. Oh, it's just a parrot. Scared ya. <laughs> no, you didn't. No, you didn't. Did you? Did you? What's your name? What's your name? Lolo, 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 Lolo. 
Okay, I get the point. Lulu. No, 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 no. Do you by any chance know Latin? Do you by any chance know Latin? <laughs> like a I'll take that as a yes. Would you mind translating something for me? Bruma. Fire away. Bruma? The longest day of the year is solstitium, the summer solstice. The shortest day is Bruma, the winter solstice. Equinoctium vernum is a spring equinox. Equinoctium autumnalis is a fall equinox. Day equals night. Lulu's always right. Bye, bird. Bye, bird. Bye, bird. Okay. Let's go down here. There goes my cell phone. Hello? Hi, Nancy. It's Mrs. Petrov. How is everything? Have you seen Linda yet? Literally speaking, no, but I did talk to her. Not that she told me anything. Literally speaking, no, but I did talk to her. Not that she told me anything. I'm just about at my wit's end. I've never known her to act like this. The last doctor that examined her said that aside from a little dry skin, which is not unusual for her, she was perfectly fine. Why is she hiding behind that curtain? Why is she hiding behind that curtain? I have no idea. When I was out there last week, I got fed up and pulled the curtain back. She threw a fit, but otherwise she looked absolutely normal. A little pale, perhaps, but who wouldn't be pale cooped up like that? Something has changed her. Something in that house. Hugh is just as bewildered and upset by her behavior as I am. Please get to the bottom of this, Nancy. You're our last hope. Where is Hugh? Where is Hugh? He was called to Rome. As a diplomat, he's always being called out of the country without warning and without any say in the matter. He'd much rather be there with Linda, although... Miss Petrov, are you there? Mrs. Petrov? Are you there? It's just that Hugh said it hasn't been very easy for him to talk to her lately. Whenever he calls, which is at least once a day, Linda always seems to fly off the handle for no reason, which doesn't make sense. Linda has always been extremely level-headed and even-tempered. She never gets angry. Who exactly? At least she didn't used to. Who exactly is Miss Drake? Who exactly is Mrs. Drake? She's Hugh's aunt. She's taken care of Blackmore Manor ever since her brother died. He was Hugh's father. She's a bit of a character. In what way? In what way? The way she spends all her time in that conservatory, slouching around, trowel in hand, murmuring to herself. She would think she was burying something. Goodbye. Or somebody. Goodbye, Miss Petrov. Goodbye, Mrs. Petrov. Goodbye, Nancy. Oh, one more thing. My niece is on call and her husband's out of town, and, and I told her I'd go over there and babysit if she had to work. So if you call and I don't answer, that's why. Bye. Okay, bye. We're gonna go in the library, which is this room. I made a guy, a thing named Nigel. Story. Ah, yes. Are you here from the agency? It's about time. Agency? Agency? Oh, dear. You're not the typist from the spiffy specialty agency, are you? Well, how do you do? I'm Nigel Mukherjee. Pleased to meet you. My name is Nancy Drew. Are you visiting Blackmore Manor? Pleased to meet you. My name is Nancy Drew. Are you visiting Blackmore Manor? I'm researching the Pendleton family, and Mrs. Drake has graciously opened the library for me. Nothing much has been written about the Pendletons. Until now. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that is? It might have something to do with their scandalous history. Or perhaps it has something to do with the family treasure. Scandalous history? Scandalous history? Well, having a family member burned as a witch can hardly be considered a mark of pride, I dare say. And then there's the whole business with the Blackmore Beast. Who was the family member? Who was the family member? Eleanor Pendleton, tried and convicted of witchcraft in 1650, quite the height of the witch trials here in Essex. It was rumored that Cromwell arranged the conviction. Cromwell? Cromwell? Oliver Cromwell? Ironsides? <laughs> I suppose they don't teach history any longer in the U.S. Lady Pendleton was a rather vocal critic of Cromwell's policies and helped many of his enemies flee the country. Whether she actually was a practitioner of witchcraft is unknown, although many visitors to the manor during her tenure reported hearing strange, ghostly bells. Some even saw phantom hands floating about the manor. 
tolling their charmed chimes. Tell me about the Penville and family treasure. Tell me about the Penville and family treasure. For centuries, the Penvillans have been very secretive. Some believe they're protectors of a fabulous treasure or of some dark secret. Can you tell me about the Blackmore Beast? Can you tell me about the Blackmore Beast? It's a story that's been told for generations out here. During the 1600s, many of the villagers reported seeing a strange beast with red eyes and giant fangs prowling the moors. If they asked the mistress of Blackmore Manor, Eleanor Penvillan, to put a bounty on the beast's head. But, oddly enough, she not only refused, she forbade anyone from hunting the creature. It was rumored that the beast was Eleanor's husband, whom she had cursed for finding out too much about the Penvillan secret. When I was walking up to the house, I saw something with red eyes that called out to me. When I was walking up to the house, I saw something with red eyes that called out to me. Really? How extraordinary. Are you sure it wasn't just jet lag? Positive, and I heard it make this kind of growling sound. Perhaps it was the cursed husband of Eleanor Penvillan prowling about the moors in search of lost yanks. <laughs> Very funny. I'll let you get back to your work. I'll let you get back to your work. Tally-ho! Okay. Let's go see Achoo! the computer. Viewed the door off. Spasiba. Achoo! Ate sway. Merci. Do you mind if I use this computer? No, not at all. But it's very old. Feel free to use mine if I'm not here. Who's Alan? Alan Penvalin was a noted researcher in computers and languages. Jane let me into his computer, but there was nothing much of interest on it. What's the password? I'm not sure. Hello, Alan. May I have your password, please? I don't know the password, so let's look around. I couldn't quite around. the provenance of that piece, but Philippe must have brought it back from the New World. He became quite wealthy as a merchant in the Americas and restored Blackmore's original splendor after it had been abandoned for years. His daughter Penelope continued the renovation, commissioning the construction of this library by Roger Vizier, who built a similar one for the French general Jean Leboeuf. Jean Leboeuf. Okay. Let's look at here. Those manuscripts are very old and brittle. They date back to the 14th century. Odo Penvalin collected most of them. His father, Randolph, and son, Milo, were rather more interested in military victories than in book collecting. And there's this one. I doubt you'll find much of interest in there. They're mainly law books. Charles Penvalin was a prominent judge in the 16th century. Sad to say, he lost his son at a young age, left his estate to his grandson, Thomas. Okay. There's... Those are mainly Penelope Penvalin's collections of French novels. She was a patron to a raft of artists, and her salon was quite popular. She was quite the libertine, even kept her maiden name after her marriage. Okay. Let's go this way. There's nothing to look over here except an empty desk. Fascinating piece, isn't it? James Penvalin sculpted it in 1591, although it appears that wand was added at a later date. He was quite a flamboyant figure and never married, but one day, a child appeared quite mysteriously in the castle, and he took her in as his own. That was Eleanor, and many of the town folk believed her to be a changeling, or fairy baby. Okay. Let's go to... The conservatory where Mrs. Drake is, which is here. Um, Looks like John Pendleton may have developed some of the plants that are in here himself. The Amateur Plant Hy Hybridizers Association of Great Britain presents the 1912 award for outstanding achievement to John Pendleton. And that's the president of that thing. From this must be some kind of well, but where's the water? Oh, watch what happens when I do this. Uh, oh, I can't really go in there, huh? Okay. Doesn't work. Probably because the well's empty. Okay. 
I'm gonna go this way. And you see this giant mm, carnivorous plant here. A carnivorous plant. Cool. Watch. That's probably not a good idea. We need to clock it like three times ah! or two times. <laughs> Second chance. That's why that's four. Do not click on that. Let's talk to Mrs. Drake. All settled in? Good. I'm happy that you're visiting Linda, but I know how much you teenagers like your televisions and loud stereos, so I must insist that you act respectfully and civilly while you stay with us. Since my nephew Hugh is away on business, I am in charge of this household. And if there's one thing I cannot stand, it's noise. Hugh's daughter Jane is staying with us and would very much like to meet you, but please try not to distract her. She has her studies and mustn't be disturbed during her lessons. Is anyone else staying here? Is anyone else staying here? We do not have any permanent house staff, if that's what you mean. The Penvalents have always been self-reliant. We get on quite well without being continuously mollycoddled by a squadron of insipid gossiping ne'er-do-wells. Now, we do have two other house guests. A Mr. Nigel Mukherjee, who is researching the Penvalent family history in the library. And Ethel Bossany, Jane's tutor. Do you know what's wrong with Linda? Do you know what's wrong with Linda? Oh, Linda simply needs some time to adjust to her new living situation. England is not the United States. We do things differently, or should I say properly, here. The doctor believes it's just a case of nerves. Her mother told me she refuses to let anyone see her. Is that true? Her mother told me she refuses to let anyone see her. Is that true? I don't know, and the doctors don't know. No one seems to know anything. All I've been told is that Linda is unwell and that in her stead, I must look after matters. Now, please, I really do not have time to entertain you. You may have the run of the house, but do not break anything and refrain from mucking about with items that aren't yours. Two rules Jane seems incapable of following. And before I forget, our kitchen is being remodeled, so our dining situation is rather unorthodox. I've made arrangements with a local restaurant to deliver meals to us. There should be a programmed number for them on the phone in your room. Feel free to order whatever you'd like. I'm uh, concerned about that thing I saw outside. I'm concerned about that thing I saw outside. It was purely your imagination, wow. unless you saw a, a stray dog. But I will not countenance any histronics about this issue. We have enough to worry about with Linda. And please do not get any ideas about going outside to investigate i do not want you tracking mud all over this house this conservatory is very beautiful but why isn't there any water in the well this conservatory is very beautiful but why isn't there any water in the well i'm not quite sure we never really used it but it was always full of water that is until my brother died and then it just dried up most of these plants were brought over by my grandfather he was quite the adventurer I remember when he brought back Lulu from the Amazon. At first, Mother wouldn't allow us to play with it because it had picked up too many unsuitable words from sailors. But it gradually learned proper manners. Can you tell me about Lulu? Can you tell me about Lulu? Lulu is a very old parrot. She must be over 80 years old. Please be very careful with her, especially if you feed her. Parrots have quite delicate constitutions, you know. Do you know what the password is for the computer in the library? Do you know what the password is for the computer in the library? No, that was my brother's toy. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good evening. Okay. Who's hungry? Who's ready for some nummies? Did you say something, Mrs. Drake? Not to you, dear. I'm dead. Okay, we're gonna go see, um, Jane. That's kind of eerie. Okay, it's a clock. Oops, wrong room. Hi, you must be Nancy. <laughs> I'm so pleased you're here. I'm she Jane. Is I creepy. know you've come to visit my stepmom, but I'd love it if you could pop by whenever you get the chance. Oh, we'll have such fun. Let's play a game. Not right now, maybe later. I'd like to ask some questions first. Not right now, maybe later. I'd like to ask some questions first. Sure, what do you want to know? 
about Mummy? Uh, I mean, Linda. I do hope you'll help. She's been a bit out of sorts lately. Do you know why she doesn't want to be seen? Do you know why she doesn't want to be seen? I think maybe it's because of the lady in black. I was playing in Mummy's room when she <laughs> wasn't there, and when I looked up, there was a lady all dressed in black putting something on Mummy's nightstand. Did you recognize the woman? Did you recognize the woman? I couldn't see her face because she wore a cape with a hood. The lady put a note on Mummy's nightstand, but I didn't read it. That's when Mummy started feeling poorly. I don't want to think about that. Let's play a game. It will cheer me up. Not right now, but maybe later. You can come in any time you want, even if I'm not here. I've got some really smashing things. I'm so happy you've come, Nancy. I hope you can make Mummy feel better. I mean, I guess we'll play a game because Hi, Nancy. Have you ever seen anything strange outside? Have you ever seen anything strange outside? Once I saw my Uncle Roger's toupee fly off Ew. during a windstorm. Talk about freaky. I mean, have you seen a strange animal outside? I mean, have you seen a strange animal outside? No, but I have heard weird noises like this. Howling. But not like a dog howling, more like something human. Mm. I don't want to think about that. It's scary enough having to live in this gloomy place. Do you think there's a treasure hidden around here? Do you think there's a treasure hidden around here? I highly doubt it. I mean, if there were, wouldn't someone have already found it? When I asked Ethel about it, she said that it's the Penville name and heritage that should be treasured. Ugh. Do you know what the password is for the computer in the library? Oh, the lady in black you saw in Linda's room. Did she look like anyone? The lady in black you saw in Linda's room. Did she look like anyone you know? Like I said before, I couldn't really see her face, but she was kind of dressed like the lady in the great hall. Which lady? Eleanor. I know it sounds weird. That's why I didn't want to tell anyone. It's too creepy. Sometimes I wonder if I just dreamed it all up. Mrs. Drake is always saying I have a rampant imagination. Do you know what the password is for the computer in the library? Yes, but I won't tell. Not unless you beat me at Skull and Bones. Looks like we'll My have to do it. My friend Hilga bought this for me. It's like Go Fish, but you have to collect three of a kind of weird things like zombies okay. and ghosts. You go first. It's like Go Fish. Um. Do you have any skulls? Dig. Do you have any coffins? All yours. There you go, girl. Any haunted houses? Pray no. not. Do you have any ghosts? Go dig. God damn. Oh, thanks. Your witches, please? No. Nope. Go dig. Do you have any bats? Nada. Thanks. Any haunted houses? You're going to have to go dig. Do you have any bones? Here you go. Thank I got you. a match. Do you have any ghosts? Go dig. Do you have any spiders? Afraid not. Do you have any tombstones? Here you go. Do you have any bats? Go dig. Any haunted houses? Go dig. Do you have any spiders? Here you go. <laughs> I got a match. Do you have any ghosts? Here you go. That's a match. <laughs> Do you have any bats? Go dig. I got a match. Oh my god, I'm on a roll. Your witches, please? No. Nope. You're going to have to go dig. Do you have any skulls? Here you go. That's a match. Do you have any tombstones? Go dig. Your witches, please? All yours. Do you have any coffins? Go dig. You got a match. Good for you. Do you have any tombstones? Nada. Any haunted houses? Get out your shovel. Do you have any coffins? Here you go. Damn. I got a match. Do you have any tombstones? Go dig. That's all I want to need. Any haunted houses? All yours. Do you have any zombies? You're going to have to go dig. A match? Hmm, you're doing great. Do you have any tombstones? That's two in a row. Sorry. That's a match. Do you have any zombies? I win. You won. Good job. Okay, the password for my grandfather's computer is on his coat of arms, plain as day. I should get going. Toodles. Okay. okay, so we're gonna look around Jane's room. We're gonna look over here. I totally love that show. Isn't Brady Armstrong so dreamy? Total hottie. Okay, that's great. For Petunia Highway, starring Brady Armstrong. 
World premiere broadcast only on the Heartthrob channel. Weird. Uh, let's look around here. Who's this? You had a guinea pig? Yes, but it died. I'm when? sorry. I don't know. I'd really rather not think about it, all right? You're so cutie. Aww. That's great. Looks like you're learning some interesting stuff. Bet you wouldn't say that if you were the one who had to learn it. Okay, topics to be covered this month. Regular, les regular lessons from 6 o'clock to 14 o'clock. Which is like, I don't, I don't really know those types of times. Then it's military time. Bridget Penvalin, biography interest, learn, sing, discuss the ballad of Bridget. French, workbook, 85 to 105. Present, simple, past and future, and conjunct conjugations. Uh, French history, 18th century, Latin, second, declension, uh, nouns. All these Latin words. History of the Roman Colosseum. Science, gravity, and the weight of objects. Winter, star constellations, northern hemisphere. Mad geometry, page 46 59. Algebra, page 78 of 94. English, rediscussions of a tale of two cities by Charles Dickens. Right to analysis of characters from Dickens' book. Our project draw Bridget's favorite star constellation, drawing color most favorite character from Dickens' book, and drawing color least favorite character from Dickens' book. Create an illustration for the Ballad of Bridget. Interesting. That's sounds like a lot of work. Um, that's her toy game box, so we're not gonna really delve into that. Over here we have something, but we'll look it at lastly. Uh, introduction to runes. Runes are a set of symbols that come to Britain with the ancient Germanic people who immigrated the country around 450 AD. They were used throughout Northern Europe during the Dark Ages, which lasted from 500 AD to 1500 AD. Because the symbols were used for writing, among other things, they can be termed an alphabet. The original runic alphabet was made up of 24 symbols and is known as the Elder Futhark. The first six runes spell out the word Futhark. The runes were compromised, comprised of straight lines so that they could be easily cut into wood or stone. The elder Futhark is divided into three, eight, or, or groups of eight. Freya's eight. Nice doodle. Hamdales. Okay, got some runes there. Tires. Each rune not only represents the letter, but an object or being as well. As a result, each rune is associated with specific characteristics or events. For example, whatever that is, is called- oh, I don't know what that is. This one? It's called- oh no, that's Othala. It not only represents the letter to- oh, it also means ancestral property, which can connote home, everything that's important to someone's security, support, experience, etc. Because each rune has an intrinsic meaning, people in the Dark Ages would sometimes randomly choose a series of runes, i.e. draw them from a bag or cast them on the ground, and try to tell the future from the juxtaposition of their meanings. <sighs> okay. Well, I don't know if we'll get to that part. Also, there's a monster book here. Let's look through it. Nigel gave that to me when I was in the library once. I think he was hoping it would scare me, but it didn't. I'm too smart to believe in that sort of stuff. Okay, monsters. What and why? The real deal of mummies, witches, werewolves, and vampires. Werewolves, lynch, and turkey. University of Manhattan. Since ancient times, the cunning savagery of wolves has, been ter has both terrified and awed the humans with whom they came into contact. In Europe, where wolves were a constant threat to livestock and allegedly small children and lone travelers, Legends as to their evil viciousness became widespread. Predictably, one of these legends involved humans who could transform themselves into wolves. These creatures were called werewolves, where means man, and the transformation came to be known as lycanthropy. Lycanthropy. Uh, what the symptoms of lycanthropy? Descriptions of werewolves and of the transformation process itself have varied greatly throughout the ages. Some lycanthropes. Uh, assumed the precise appearance of a wolf. Others turned to something that was half human, half beast. Sometimes the change was permanent. Sometimes lycanthropes could change forms at all, at will. 
Sometimes environmental factors brought about the transformation. The symptoms and duration of a werewolf's condition depended entirely upon the curse that initiated that particular case of lycanthropy. In general, victims who were destined to alter their form permanently use, usually appeared pale. Fatigue was a frequent complaint, as well as weak vision, a dry tongue, and constant thirst. These symptoms usually culminated, accompanied, or were soon followed by hair growth, especially in the hair, face and hands. Fingernails grew long, and the eyes gradually changed shape and color. The victim's personality also changed. He, or she, became increasingly ill-tempered and aggressive. As the transformation grew more apparent, the victim usually went to hiding, returned to society only to satisfy its newfound appetite for human flesh. For temporary, quote-unquote, victims who would change their appearance at will or who were involuntarily transformed by the scent of a wolf's nocturnal howl or by a full moon, lycanthropic symptoms occur not over time but quickly, almost instantaneously. They were forced to assume human form again at sunrise, either by shedding their hair, claws, and fangs, or by taking off their skin and hiding it intact. Such a lycanthrope would reportedly suffer the same fate as its shed skin. If it was found to destroy, the werewolf would likewise be destroyed. According to legend, those who voluntarily became werewolves obtained their ability to change the form through sorcery. Involuntary lycanthropes were people who had been cursed by someone they had wronged or had been bitten by or born to be a were born to a werewolf. Since there was no cure and since most werewolves were thought to be mortal, these unfortunate beings were compelled to lead dark, desperate lives until they were felled by a fatal wound to the brain or heart that they could only be destroyed by a silver bullet is a modern embellishment. Why? The reason for lycanthropy. Um, psychology plays a significant role in ly lycanthropy. Wanting to imitate, if not actually become, the thing or person that, can fear that one fears the most seems to be part of human nature. Far from being a universal phenomenon, werewolves are known in regions where there are no wolves. Instead, people spur tales of werebeer, werebears, or were-tigers, or were-crocodiles, whichever animal is most feared. The old saying, if you can't beat them, join them, goes a long way in explaining the source and longevity of many monster legends. More important throughout history, there have been instances of people who actually were werewolves, in their own minds at least. Convinced that they had been cursed, they presented all the physical symptoms of lycanthropy and often paved violently. Because they fully believed that they had become werewolves, they acted like werewolves. As a result, the people around them treated them like werewolves, which only reinforced their delusion, thus trapping them in a vicious cycle. Circle. This psychological disorder was no doubt prevalent in the Middle Ages when belief in sorcery, curses, and creatures such as werewolves were commonplace. The power of suggestion cannot be underestimated, especially in places where education is minimal and superstition passes for truth. Instances of lycanthropic disorder are rare in modern times, although it is possible in many cases are reported due to misdiagnosis or familial embarrassment. For research, Psychologists such as myself, information gathering is a never-ending process. If you believe you know someone who has undergone lincolnthropic metamorphosis, please contact me. And that's the end. And she's still humming. Okay, Jane, calm down. Okay, over here is a little baking area. I use that to make cakes for Lulu, the yeah, pirate. It's the that's why the ingredients for Lulu. are so nasty. Like, I would eat mealworms. Okay, we'll be back with this area. Um, let's see what's over here. Uh, let's look at this. Who's this? That's she's my mom. Pretty. My real mom. She's an opera singer. It's not like she's famous or anything, but she does live in Paris. Hmm. Is that the one's a stepmom? What is this book? Don't know, really. Ethel gave it to me. She said it belonged to my grandfather. Do you think Brady Armstrong is cute? Am I allowed to read it? Oh my. It's a weird book. So ancient. Wow. Each of those cups seems to be associated with a Roman numeral. Okay, keep those in mind. There's a weird tapestry here. That was written by Charles Pemberlin way back in like the 1500s. When I read it, it seemed really familiar, you know? It says, as the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon the strength of absent friends and toast to their memories and happiness and wonder. With this stalwart heart, 
Stalwart heart of a knight, let char- charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a dedicated geome- geometer, and fear not the ravages of father time. For dear child, as you learn the lesson of folly, the secrets of this world shall dawn in thy soul. Okay. And now we're gonna... Okay, she's gonna do this. This is a family tree. That's why we're doing it last, because we're gonna go through each one real quick. That's my family tree. Ask me anything about anyone. Go on, ask me. Oh, uh, there's quite a bit. Uh, Randolph. Tell me about Randolph. Randolph the Red, so named for his bright red hair, was considered a hero at the Battle of Poitiers. For his heroism, King Edward III awarded him with the lands in the region called Penvelin. That's how we got our name. Interesting. Anor. Who was Anor? Anor. He was Edo's brother. Simon. Tell me about Simon. He lived from 1358 to 1412. No, 1411. We don't know very much about him. Oh, no. That's an odd name. Yeah. He isn't very exciting, really. Like farming and cows. His son Milo is much more interesting. Okay, I'll get there in a minute. Agatha. Who is Agatha? She was a nun. I think she lived in Ireland. Who was Marjorie? She died when she was a little girl. It Aww. was really sad. She's like, what? She was about, like... She's about eight. What did Guido do? He made pizza. <laughs> no, I'm joking, of course. I don't know anything about him except that he died in 1433 because he outlived all of his siblings. Wow. Okay, let's go to Milo. What about Milo? Milo inherited not only his grandfather's red hair, but his military prowess. Milo was instrumental in the Siege of Khan and was awarded even more lands by Henry V. What do you know about Cecilia? Cecilia. She married the Lord of Limerick and did a lot of needlework. She had a ton of kids too, Ugh. like 20. Can Yikes. you imagine? Where are they? Jacobus. What about Jacobus? Jacobus. He died Jacobus when he was went... like nine. Um, Hugo. And Hugo? Um, he had a lot of kids, and his dates were 1401 to 1466. Albert. Tell me about Albert. He was very mysterious, and the people of Blackmore were afraid of him because he knew all these scientific things. No one knows much about him, though. Who was Joseph? Er, Josephus? Yeah, they used a lot of Latin names back then and weird spellings. He became like a priest or parson or something. Robertus. Who was Robertus? He was a knight but died in some kind of jousting tournament. He was twins with Josephus. Okay, Lucy. Uh, and you see Who was Anisha? A nun. <laughs> okay. Who was Jeanette? It's Jeanet. Jeanet. I think he wrote plays, maybe. I don't know, I forget. Lucia. Tell me about Lucia. Lucia. Isn't that a pretty God, name? If I have a daughter, I'll name her that. It's pretty. Who is Adam? Oh, uh, like he married Eve. Duh. No kidding. I actually don't know anything about him. I think he was the son of Hugo, though, but I forget. Who was Joan? Is that misspelled? No, that's how they spelled it then. She got married to this duke somewhere in Flanders. Okay, next page. Edmund. Tell me about Edmund. He was into cows. He did a lot of breeding of cows and sheep and got some kind of award from the king. Nicolina. Who was Nicolina? She died That's when she was a baby. I have many ancestors who died young, but Ethel said that Penvelins yeah. and Gemma live a long time. She died three. Tell me about Walter. Uh, he was born in 1448 or 9. I'm kind of bored doing this right now. Sorry, Margie. Who was Marge? <laughs> going, girl. I forget. I think she was... Oh, I don't know. Who was Charles? Oh, oh. Charles was a famous judge and wrote very important books on law. But his boy, Garrett, drowned while he was really young. Oh, God. Galena. Who was Gillian? Gillian, my God. She Duke I'm of tired. Ballingsford, but she stayed at Blackmore to raise her son, Thomas, who inherited the estate when his grandfather, Charles, died. Garrett? Tell me about... Garrett. Uh, he drowned on his 19th birthday. Oh, God. Tell me about Thomas. He was Charles's grandson and wrote a lot of poetry. He also had three wives, <laughs> Catherine, Anne, and Mary. Okay. But not like at a... the same time. They died and he just remarried. Oh, my God. Did he, like, kill him off? What? Who's James? He never married, but one day when he was very old, a baby was found at the doorstep to the manor. 
He took her in and raised her as his own. That was Eleanor. What did Francis do? He got into a big fight with his brother James and lived in France. Who was Elizabeth? Like the Queen of England? Oh, you mean Elizabeth, my ancestor. It's weird that she's the only ancestor named Elizabeth, since it's such a popular name. Jeffrey. Tell me about Jeffrey. I'd rather not. I'm kind of bored. Wouldn't you rather <laughs> I'm bored, Ernie. Yeah, she still has to Can you tell questions. me about George, the one born in 1566? Well, mm, he like lived and died. End of story. Eleanor. What can you tell me about Eleanor? Just that she was burned as a witch, but it wasn't true. And her father, James, died when he saw her die. And then the family fled to France. I don't want to talk about this. Who was Edward? He lived in France with his father. And they called She's still answering. He was very interested in languages and translated books from Greek and Latin. Virginie. Who was Virginie? Virginie. She was married to the Duke of Barrowbold and died in the Great Ooh. Fire of London. Yikes. Tell me about Francois. He was a dwarf and became a trusted confidant <laughs> was a to Louis Catorze. Little people often held positions of great esteem at that time. How much of it? Oh my gosh, more people. Corbin. Tell me about Corbin. There's another page. Well, I don't know. He doesn't have a coat of arms in the Great Hall because he didn't live here. We're getting to the Wasn't 20th century here subject. almost. That's all I know. Okay, Helene. Who was Helene? Can we stop soon? Yes. Helene married the Duke of Bouville and died in 1760. End of story. Frederick. Who was Frederic? He was a soldier for the French. He was killed in the War of Spanish Succession in July of 1702. Colin. What about Colin? Oh, this is so, so cool. They say he was a spy for England. That was so, so, so France. cool. Isn't that so very? I'd like to be a spy. Hey, James Bond wanna And be. Philippe? He made a fortune in the New World and bought back most of the lands that were confiscated by Cromwell. They are Who was Teofield? He what? lived most of his life <laughs> on the island of Mauritius and discovered like a million plant species. Brigitte. Tell me about Brigitte, the one who was born in the 17th century. She was absolutely mad about cricket, the game, not the insect. She actually saw the first cricket match in 1744. Personally, though, mm, I it's can't not for everyone. the sport. It's not Who's really Penelope? popular here. I don't know much about her, except that she was very loved by practically everyone in England, and there were a million poems written about her. If I have a boyfriend, I'd never let him write a poem about me. <laughs> we're too young. <laughs> it looks like George and his brother Henri died in the same year. What happened? They were lost at sea. I guess they traveled a lot to Canada, especially to Oak Island. It looks like George and oh, his brother okay. Henri died in the same year. Damn. What happened? They were lost at sea. I guess they That's, traveled a lot okay, to Canada. Okay, I got it, got it. Especially got to it. Oak Island. <laughs> I don't know why I collect Henry after Who's George. Who's Marianne? Um, she got shipwrecked on this deserted island. Oh my god, these are tragic stories. And they wrote stories. a story about it. Yeah, that's it. Jean. Tell me about Jean. Jean. Hello, it's pronounced Jean. Jean. He was Jean. killed by a boar Jean on a Jean. trip. <laughs> they eat people's flesh, you know? Ew. No, I'm kidding. But he really did get killed by a boar. Serves him right, though, for hundreds of That's true, I animal. agree. Even if it might be too far, about... that's what happens Martha. when you find a wild she creature. She completely daft. She'd wear really bizarre <laughs> She's completely outfits, daft. and she was one of the first women to ride on a steam train. John. What do you know about John? He was an opera singer, just like my mom. He sang in some Mozart operas. Wow, that's I nice. Think. Brigitte. Tell me about Brigitte, the one born in 1759. She never married and was bonkers for astronomy. Blech. She adopted her sister's son, Richard, who later got killed at Waterloo. Ugh. Peter. Who was Peter? Mm, let's see. He had a wooden leg and he was Jesus. attacked by wolves once. That's all I remember. He had a wooden leg was attacked by wolves? Isabel. Was born in well, at least he had a wooden leg. He didn't really That was die. Isabel. She wrote many letters about the French Revolution and actually saw Marat's dead body in the Ooh. bathtub. Talk about gross. That is eerie. Who was Jacques? Don't laugh, but he invented the lawnmower bag in 1831. I swear, I'm totally not making she this She didn't up. want me to talk about this, and now she's, like, all excited about talking about it. Like, make up her mind. Tell me about Richard. He died in Waterloo, fighting against Napoleon. Edward. Tell me about Edward, the one from the 19th century. He was a big explorer and went all over the world. Carol. He wasn't very close with his son, who was also an explorer. They'd only see each other by chance in weird remote places like Samarkand and Walla Walla. Who fuck? is Caroline? Caroline was a chemist and helped identify the element lanthanum. I'm not sure what the element does, 
I think it's a heavy metal. Who William. was the William who died so young? He was Edward's Oh my god, brother. he's three. He his son after him. Jesus. Okay, we're almost done. Who was William? He was an explorer, just like his father. He was kind of a whiner, so I heard. Okay. Cassandra. Were Cassandra and Hector twins? Uh-huh. Cassandra was totally obsessed with lawn tennis and was one of the first people in England to have a court installed at her home. Hector was the first ball boy. Sophia. What did Sophia do? She was a big collector of impressionist artwork, but Ooh. most of it was destroyed in a fire. Oh, that sucks. Arthur. Tell me about Arthur. He lived in the Wild West in the Americas Is and was a bandit <laughs> with El Diablo's gang. El Diablo's gang? Who is Cynthia? I don't know. I'm kind of tired right now. I would be tired if I had to use my brain to remember all these people. <laughs> wow, Catherine <laughs> sure lived for a long time. She lived the longest of any Penvalin. I hope I live that long, but not if I'm all like <laughs> creaky and cranky. Creaky and cranky. Tell me Rose. about Rose. It's a real sad Aww. story. She and her granddaughter Rachel lived in France during the I war mean, it's, and were killed. It is tragic, but that's usually what who happens was John, in wars. The one who was born in 1873. He was this huge naturalist and did a lot of exploration in the Amazon. I think there's a plant named after him. Or maybe a monkey, I forget. Malachi. Who is Malachi? He Malachi. was a doctor of medicine and did a lot of <laughs> the research Italian on said Malachi. diseases. Happily, I'm blessed with perfect skin. Okay, rub it in. You're pale. <laughs> Tell me about Obadiah. He Obadiah. He lived in the US for most of his life and married this weird woman named Eustacia. Eustacia? What is with these names? Us. She's totally creepy. Rachel. Who was Rachel? She died in France during the war. I guess she worked for the French Resistance. Esther. Who was Esther? Mm. Esther Pemberton Rondo, born in 1897 and died in 1951. Her friends called her Polly. Nahum. What did Nahum do? He died in the flu epidemic. Oh, that's more interesting. Alan. Who was Walmart Alan? After he this. was my grandfather, but I didn't know him because he died when I was little. Mm. I guess he was nice. Leticia. What do you know about Leticia? Loves plants, hates noise. You can ask her oh, about it. She's usually in the Leticia Drake. Got it. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Can I ask why you're humming? Hi, Nancy. Uh, I don't really want to play a game right now. I, I should better get going. Get going. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm making sure I looked at everything here. Brady Armstrong. Oh, he's so strong. Okay, come on. What am I missing? There's gotta be somewhere around here. As the moon rises upon thee, fear not, but draw upon a strength of absent friends and toast to their memories and happiness and wonder. With a stalwart heart of a knight, let charity be thy guiding angel. Stay firm in knowledge as a dedicated geometer, and fear not the ravages of father time. For, dear child, as you learn the lessons of folly, the secrets of this world shall dawn in thy soul. Okay. Guess we could play a Hi, game. Nancy. Do you want to play a game? That would be lovely. Which game would you like to play? I, know what to I do. have a fun astronomy game. Look inside the chest over there and pick a game. My great aunt said it's I a game. I want to play a game. So I put my games in there. I'm just going to show what kind of games there are. Play. We can play Bull, Constellation Match, Petroglyph Punch, Skull and Bones, and I also have a jigsaw I love puzzle. Skull and Bones. You sure have a lot of games. And so I much. I love games. <laughs> I want to make computer games when I grow up. Oh, you're so cool. I used to like Skull and Bones, which we just played. 
Um, puzzle's okay. Uh, let's do... This one's a good one. Bowl. Up for a game of bowl? board game. It's really easy to play. You roll this was in another and game, too. The number of dots on the corn. If no dots, then you get to move five spaces. Okay. You get two turns, but you can pass on your second you turn. You have to try to get them. Keep on going so I'm orange, he's and blue. And you can capture my person if you land on him. Whoever gets all the warriors wins. I'll be blue. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. That's two. That's three. You can go. Don't you freaking dare. You can go. Two! Yay! Haha, uh -huh. dumbass. Three. Three. You can go. Uh oh, she might get me. One. You can go. Give me one. Yes. Gotcha. Dumbass. <laughs> Sorry. I'm on a roll with these games so far. You can go. It's funny. You can go. One, two, three. Two, please. Oh, damn. Your oh, turn. Who she can't give me? You can go. Suck. Your turn. Uh oh, she might give me. Another ah! warrior bites the dust. Okay, come on. <sighs> Your turn. Maybe we shouldn't hit it all the way. One, two, three. One, two. You can go. One. You can go. Okay. <laughs> you can go. Come on. Your turn. Uh, uh, not four. Uh. Sorry. Sorry. I only have one left. Shit. Your turn. Don't do it. Don't do it. Your turn. Three, please. Thank you. Rats. Oh, I have one more. Okay. Your turn. Three. Don't get two. Damn it. Sorry. Okay, I have one more. Come on, game. Your turn. Pass. Yes. Oh, no. Not fair. Yeah, You're I'm just... so good. Give me another try. No. I should, get going. I should get going. Au revoir. I just wanted to play another game. I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't know if Ethel, her tutor, comes, but I hope so. Um, I'm just gonna, you know what? I thought she would come, but we are gonna call that guy on that in that book. Um, I think we use our phone. Actually, directory. Palakai Vadas. Vadas. We're just gonna call him real quick. This is Paliki. Hi, Paliki. my name is Nancy Drew. Could I ask you some questions about lycanthropy? I'm sorry, I'm about to leave for a seminar mm. and I'm very busy. Besides, I've written two books and 12 articles on the subject. If you have questions, perhaps you should try reading one of them. I did, that's how I got your number, dumbass. I did. That's how I got your number. Well, if you didn't understand something, I'm afraid I really don't have time to explain it to you. Jeez. I understood everything. It's just that I know someone who seems to be exhibiting some of the symptoms of lycanthropic meta... Lycanthropic metamorphosis? Well, that's different. Talk to me. What do you consider to be the definitive signs that someone is turning into some kind of animal? What do you consider to be the definitive signs that someone is turning into some kind of animal? Symptoms are relatively subtle. A dry mouth, a fatigue, impaired vision, and reduced blood flow to the skin. Is this person pain? I can't say. Uh, yes. Yes, but the really disturbing thing is she won't let anyone see her. She just lies oh, in bed that, all day yeah. behind She's this pale. curtain. Hmm. And at night, what does she do at night? I can't be sure, but I do know that I saw something outside the night I arrived. Some kind of animal. And when I asked to see my friend, I was told she was unavailable. This sounds very promising. You don't really believe she's turning into some kind of creature, do you? Young lady, I believe the human mind is capable of far more than we can ever imagine. Pale skin, dry mouth, fatigue. The human mind is perfectly capable of causing the body to exhibit such symptoms. If 
It is so motivated. What would motivate someone to turn to an animal? What would motivate someone to turn into an animal? Most lycanthropes are under a great deal of stress. Due perhaps to the death of a loved one, marriage, divorce, a relocation, that sort of thing. They're emotionally vulnerable, which means they're particularly open to the power of suggestion. You lost me. You lost me. Somehow, they get it in their head that they're destined to take another form. They see something. They read something. Someone says something to them. Somehow, they come to believe they're supposed to undergo a physical metamorphosis. And so, in their weakened psychological state, they do. Our temper tantrum symptomatic of lycanthropy? Our temper tantrum symptomatic of lycanthropy? There are no hard and fast rules when it comes to lycanthropy. Or almost anything else, for that matter. But, but if someone believes that what they're changing into is irrational, or has a bad temper, then they will exhibit irrational, ill-tempered behavior. Especially if this is contrary to their former nature. Thanks, Thanks for, for your time. time. Good day. Okay, let's call Ned. Oh, uh, Ned. My boyfriend. Hello? Hi, Ned. Hey, Nancy. Just wanted to let you know I got here safely. Just wanted to let you know I got here safely. So how's Blackmore Manor? A little on the spooky side. How's Mrs. Petrov's daughter? A little on the spooky side. A little on the spooky side. Or next question, please. It's just very strange. She stays in bed hiding behind this curtain all day. Do you have any idea what the deal is? Nope. We'll just keep talking to her. As soon as she knows she can trust you, I'm sure she'll open up. Linda's stepdaughter Jane, she has this really weird picture book in her room. Linda's stepdaughter Jane, she has this really weird picture book in her room. What do you mean a picture book? I mean, pictures are all that's in this book. No words, just these strange hand-drawn images. And the book is old, like it's been around for centuries. Drawings, huh? Maybe it's a, some kind of an ancient instruction manual. You know, for people who didn't know how to read. Could be. When I asked her about it, Jane said her grandfather gave it to her. And then... And then what? And then she changed the subject. Hmm. Sounds like that book may prove to be pretty important. I'll talk to you soon. I'll talk to you soon. I'll be waiting. Okay, now we're gonna go see Linda. Take a visit to Linda. Ugh. I'm sorry to bother you again, but Jane told me about the lady in black. What lady in black? Jane never said anything to me about a lady in black. That kid is so weird, I just don't get her. She seems very concerned about you. She seems very concerned about you. <sighs> yes, I know. I just don't know how to be a stepmother to her. She's just so strange. Look, just forget about me. You can't help me and that's that. I'm sorry. Linda, you have to give me a chance. Everyone is so worried about you. If you just tell me what's happened, maybe I could help. Linda? Linda? I'll be going now. I made a promise to your mother and I plan to keep it. I'm here for you when you need me. Bye bye. You got a lot of help, Linda. You hired me right. Or someone did. Mystery me. It's so annoying. I think actually it was Hugh, maybe. I don't know. Forgot. Oh, why do I keep doing that? Let's call Hugh. Let's check in with Hugh and meet people. Um. Hugh. Penvalin. Hugh Penvalin here. Hello, Mr. Penvalin. This is Nancy Drew. I'm the one who's visiting Linda. You know, from the United States? Across the pond? Yes, of course. Are you at Blackmore? Yes, I am. And I've talked to Linda. Good for you, because frankly, that's something I've been quite unable to do lately. These temper tantrums of hers make rational discourse well nigh impossible. She gets angry for no reason? She gets angry for no reason? Absolutely none. We'll be talking on the phone about the weather or Jane's lessons or something equally innocuous, and suddenly she'll be bellowing at me and slamming the phone down. Are you sure you don't inadvertently say something, you know, argumentative? Are you sure you didn't inadvertently say something, you know, argumentative? I promise you, these rages of hers are totally uncalled for and quite unbearable. I love her dearly, but she's making things very difficult. I understand that Miss Drake is your aunt. I understand that Mrs. Drake is your aunt? Yes, Aunt Letitia. We're not very close, however. 
She's always been rather aloof, much more interested in being a Penvalin than a person, if you know what I mean. Does Linda get along with her? Does Linda get along with her? As far as I know, yes. Although I have caught my aunt eyeing Linda strangely at times. And of course, there's the six-month habitation clause. The what? The what? According to the Penvalin rules of inheritance, the spouse of Blackmore Manor's current owner, that would be Linda since I'm the current owner, the spouse of the current owner must reside in the manor for at least six months. Should she or he leave the manor before six months is up, ownership of one half of the estate immediately passes to the next legal heir. And that would be Mrs. Drake. Correct. I met your daughter Jane. I met your daughter Jane. Quite the bundle of energy, isn't she? I get the feeling that she's a little lonely. I get the feeling that she's a little lonely. I'm sure she is, what with a private tutor instead of school and Linda being under the weather. And coming back to Blackmore no doubt reminds her of her real mother. Renee and I were divorced almost two years ago. Jane went into a bit of a tailspin for a while, but she's come to adore Linda. She's been calling her mummy since the day we were married. Have you spent much time on your father's computer, the one that's in the library? Have you spent much time on your father's computer, the one that's in the library? I dare say I've never touched it. Mathematics, computer science, linguistics, all the things mm. that fascinated my scholarly father bored me to tears. I don't disagree. He gave up on me quite early on. With Jane, however, it was a different story. What do you mean? From the day she was born, my father doted on her far more than he ever doted on me. Read to her, bought her books, games. Truth be told, I was a bit jealous. He passed away when she was still a toddler. So it's unlikely she remembers all the attention he showered on her. It was nice but talking I to you. Do, and I still find it so out of character as to be mystifying. It was nice talking to you. This is an extremely busy time for me, so I apologize in advance if you call and I'm unavailable. I understand. Good. Two people Cheerio. are available usually. Okay. Um, that and the woman who's babysitting. Um, forgot her face. Let's go see Lulu right now. Calm down. How good are you giving hints? How good are you at giving hints? Tell your trouble to Lulu. The key I have fits the lock by Jane's door, but it sticks and I can't turn it. Any suggestions? The key I have fits the lock by Jane's door, but it sticks and I can't turn it. Any suggestions? Talk to Tommy about Fred and Johnny. Bye, bird. Bye, bird. Bye, bye. And the winner is Lulu. That's Polly great. Bird, I need bird. the key. Okay, the let me just. Time has come for a closing book. I'm gonna have to go see Linda. The time I think. Has come for a closing book. Lou, Lou, I can still hear you. Linda, I'll be going now. Uh, that's what I always say, cause that's like a line. Okay, well, um, should we go see Jane again? She's probably sleeping. Uh, is it that time? Um... Should I go to sleep or no? I don't know. Hmm... Let's see if I can change the time. Alarm. I said it's 8 o'clock, I think. That would be good in the morning. Oh, this is to scare me. It's, it's just mumble. What is that? Exactly. It's weird chanting. It's 3.15 p.m. Again. Oh, well, maybe I'd better have a look around. True. We're gonna actually set it to 2 o'clock. Alarm. I'm going to set it to 2 p.m. Hi. 
Hi, Linda. Nancy, I can't believe you're still here. I thought for sure that maybe you can help me. I know I can help you. Just tell me what's wrong. I know I can help you. Just tell me what's wrong. I haven't told anyone what I'm about to tell you. Mostly because what happened is all my fault. I should have listened, but I didn't. What's all your fault? What's all your fault? <sighs> One day after Hugh left for Rome, I inadvertently discovered a secret passageway. I started to explore it. And pretty soon I found this really old looking message etched into the wall. When I read it, I realized it was some kind of ancient curse. I tried to laugh it off, but it was kind of unnerving. So I went back to my room and found a note on my nightstand. And on it was written the exact same curse. That very night, I started to feel strange. The curse has been coming true ever since. Where? Did anyone see you go to that pa Did the passageway? Did you go into the passageway? No, no one. You see, I've been warned not to go poking around by Hugh, Mrs. Drake, Ethel. They all said the manor is old and dangerously decayed, so I made sure no one was watching. And even if someone did see me in the passageway, I went directly to my room afterwards. How could someone write down the exact same curse and get it into my room before I came back? Hmm. No, something else did this. Something not human. Where is the secret passageway? Where is the secret passageway? I can't tell you that. I've already caused my own doom. I won't do the same to you. I can handle it, Linda, really. I can handle it, Linda, really. You have no idea what you're up against. Can I at least see the note that was left on your nightstand? I burned it as soon as I read it. I don't know why I bothered telling you this. You can't do anything for me. Jeez, I should have listened, but I didn't. And now what's done is done. How well do you get along with Jane? How well do you get along with Jane? I've been giving it the old college try, believe me. But she can just be so strange sometimes. How so? How so? She'll just do the oddest things. Like one night just after Hugh left, she came into my room and insisted I read a book to her. It doesn't sound very odd to me. That doesn't sound very odd to me. The book was on monsters, vampires, and werewolves Okay, we take that seriously. I mean, what kind of little girl reads books like that? Emo. She fits right into this house, that's I'll for sure. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. I hope so. Jeez, the way she said I hope so. Okay, let's go see Jane, and I think her tutoring is done. Mm -hmm. Hi, Nancy. Uh, do you know of any secret passageways in the manor? Do you know of any secret passageways in the manor? I found one, but all it did was lead to this funny picture. Do you think you could show me where the passageway is? Wouldn't you rather play a game with me? I'm so bored. I'll pl if I play a game, uh, I'll play a game with you after you've shown me the passageway. I'll play a game with you after you show me the passageway. No, we'll play a game, and if you Gun. win, I'll tell you where it is. Oh. I got this at this really neat museum. I'm gonna in the beat States. you at this again, Jane. It's supposed to be an original Come game, but don't worry. You don't have to like kill people or take their hearts out or anything. I already played it. I'll Let's be it. blue. Here we go. Okay. Um. Since I already played, she didn't have to tell me the rules. You can go. Don't do it. Yes. Your turn. <sighs> it's on like Donkey Kong up in here. Two. Your turn. Oh my god, no. One, two, three. Your turn. Watch it. Your damn turn. It, damn it. Oh god. Pass. Oh my god. Pass. You can go. No. No, she only gets two. Okay, good. Thanks. Damn it. We keep walking across each other. Is this Your game turn. broken? Did I, like, be not supposed to be? Your oh, turn. Uh, what the hell? You can go. Don't do it. Your turn. Four, please. Your turn. It's literally broken. We're walking past each other. What the hell? Pass. No. You can go. One, two. Don't get two again. Pass. Thank you. Oh, Finally, no. some something. Okay. You can go. 
She's like, pause, because I'm just scared that I'll win. <laughs> she's like, uh, she's going to beat me. You go. One, please. Ooh, what was that? Oh, no. What was that? What was that? Oh, no, it was correct. That's what I want to hear. You can go. My competitive ass wants to win all these. Pause. Okay. Damn. Your turn. Pause. You can go. Don't do it. Don't get four. Good. Your turn. Two, please. Three. Fuck. Your turn. I only have two more, I think. Your turn. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, no. Oh, no, said Jane. Jesus. Your turn. Don't get three. Damn. I said Sorry. that. Sorry. Oh well. One out of three. Three out of one. Your turn. Come on. One, two, three. Two. Fuck. Sorry. No. Your turn. I just need to get one more girl. Pass. There we go. All right. You knocked out that time. Okay. I found the secret passageway in the East Hall. Thank you. That's the hall with the coat of arms on the door. But it's not a very exciting secret passageway. You're going to be totally bored. The East Wouldn't ha you rather play a game with me the, instead? The East Hall is locked. Do you know how I can get in it? The East Hall is locked. Do you know how I can get in it? My great aunt took the key. She probably thought I'd break something in there. But I found another one. Here, you can keep it if you want. Oh, it's a pretty one. It's Jade. Have you heard anything strange at night that sounds like chanting? Have you ever heard anything strange at night that sounds like chanting? No. Okay, I should get going. I should get going. Come back soon. Okay. We are going to end this for part two. Oh, uh, hi, me. Ethel. You must be Nancy. I, I thought you would come. How do you do? How do you do? James that's, that's when I first play this, that's, visiting. this bitch scared You're me. all she's talked about for the past week. Well, I feel so embarrassed. I didn't think I have a fan club all the way over here. Wow, I feel so embarrassed. <laughs> I didn't think I'd have a fan Listen, club all the girl. way over here. Yes, well, I'm sorry, but I'm in a bit of a rush. I need to go over some things with Jane. You go oh, do that, right? I guess I'll be going then. You go do it that. It's a pleasure uh, meeting you, Nancy. Our paths will cross again, I'm sure. Uh, our paths will not cross again with your ass. Sorry. Um, you just screwed up on me like that. <laughs> the shit out of me. Uh, very rude. Time has come. That's great. I'm gonna actually save it here for part two. Okay.